So on your part three oral exam, you may see a graph like this, where you see the gap in millimeters graphed against a corrected reading. And so let's talk about what would be measured in this image, what the significance of it is, why it exists, how you would measure it with film and an ion chamber, and then what a typical value would be. So first of all, you need to recognize that this is the dosimetric leaf gap. So it is significant because it directly impacts dose algorithms. It must be measured for your linear accelerator and then put in the treatment planning system. Now, the reason it exists, so it is the essentially leaf end leakage and it exists for all MLCs, but variants exist because the leaves have rounded ends. And even when totally closed, there is a gap uh, radiation can go through. The width of this strip is the DLG, essentially. So now how would you measure it with film? So with film, you need to make exposures with various physical leaf gaps, analyze all the films, find the full width half max, plot that by gap distance, extrapolate that back to zero, and the absolute value of that is a DLG. Now, how about with an ion chamber? So with an ion chamber, you want to expose a open field and then uniform fields made with sliding the MLC with varying leaf widths. Repeating this and then plot the reading versus the gap, find the value at zero by extrapolating again, and that absolute value is the DLG. So what you see here, we have the cor corrected reading. So this should clue you in that this DLG was determined by a ion chamber, but you can again do it with the film. Now Varian has its own DOG calculator, they have pre-made plans for you. So really all you have to do is run it, which is really nice. But ultimately, if you were to make your own, you need to make a series of plans that have a kind of sliding window MLCs. And again, just varying wheat, uh, leaf widths, and then plot that against the gap. And then you can find the absolute value, which if you look at your DLG, or similar DLGs, you will see that they are all approximately 1.5 to 2 millimeters. So remember that's millimeters. Remember that it's pretty small. And even in varying reports, when you look at the treatment report, sometimes that value is in there to kind of give you a, a constant reminder. So this is for a varying machine. And it's, it would be really good to know these values. That could be something definitely that is expected of you in your exam. So understand DOG, why it exists, its significance, how to measure it, and then a typical value. And that should set you up for success. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below. Happy studying.